Now, as I was saying before we got rudely interrupted by my cute little daughter, Mr. Deadhead, our assistant, is here to show us that if you are going after Trophy Steelhead, it's really important the way you go after him. I prefer spay fishing for my steelhead because I get to throw bigger hooks. We have two hooks. And this is virtually impossible to throw a hook like this with a single head and eight right rod. This compared to ouch, these are really sharp. This hook, what's going to stay in the fish's mouth better? For example, so we're going to take Mr. Deadhead here, trophy steelhead of a lifetime, 32 plus pounder, but I have to paint one of these days. And we're going to put both of these hooks in there. Which hook looks like it could stay, and which hook looks like it can control the fish better? The gold one, the spay one, right? It's not rocket science. So, we are going to go from there to tying the fly. So, since I have no one to help me because my husband's not home right now, I'm going to do a close-up of our little friend here. Tying a, a steelhead fly on a spay hook is important. The color isn't important on the thread. Some people are very anal about keeping colors with this, the same color with the fly, but I'm not. I usually use just black or I use a brown color. If I do have every color known to man, I'm just not picky. What you want to do is you, you want to cover the whole entire hook with the thread. Why do we do that? because it'll give the, the material that you're tying onto your hook a, a basis so it doesn't slide off. And first, now, so now we're going to do a tail, and I know you can't see me, but we're trying to focus on the, t the fly right now. So this is polar bear hair. It's naturally shiny. It's actually the most natural, shiny, a uh, fly time product that you can buy if you're into it, organic flies like I am. And I'll hold the end like this. And I'll take the butt back, and you want to get all this little stubble off of it. And then I kind of go for a natural, natural look. So I kind of hold it like this. See, I'm holding it parallel to the uh, the hook. I want it to stick out about that far. You don't want a tail on your um, your spay fly to be too long because sometimes the fish will strike at it and it'll just get nothing but marabou, arctic fogs, whatever happens to be your tail, in this case polar bear hair. And then I tie two wraps, you know, kind of holding it long like this so it holds it tight that and I do that again and then tighten it. That way it doesn't wrap around when you hold that loose loop. I'm going to do a couple turns. I'm not going to put too much because we don't want too much thread going around your fly because that will make it bulky and ruin the profile. And plus one part about the art of tying a fly is it being artistic. It's too bad I have my thumbnail today. Uh, go like that. Do, 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 do. Okay, so now that that's on, look how pretty that is. We take this. Like I said, we don't want a bulky fly. We want it to be nice and clean. And we don't want it to be thick, because things will slide off of each other if it's too thick. And we tie this, cut this off like so. Now, and then we run it a little ways up. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of white arctic fox in there. I like to use hair instead of 
feathers because hair retains its shape in the water. Feathers, on the other hand, just get kind of um, wet, slimy, and uh, worm-like, and we don't want that. We want a nice, perfect profile. The more profile you have, the bigger chance of your steelhead seeing your fly. Again, we have to take off this real thick, icky stuff so it doesn't make our fly bulky and non-streamlined. That's what I'm looking for. Streamlined. Okay. So then, we're going to go back down and up. And we just put it all the way back. Well, you're seeing this against my nice dark blue sweater. And it's all happy there. And then we put some flash in it. I know we have lots of natural color from the polar bear hair, but I'm a big believer in flash. I mean, come on, look at this. You got this spoon, what's it got here? On the spinner, excuse me. It's a big flashy thing. Of course it's dull because it's been in my fly box forever. But it catches a fish's eye. I even heard of people tying flies with, with spinning blades on it to catch the fish's attention. There we go. Let me lay that out. Notice everything's the same length. I'm going to just do a couple loops right here. See, so if you don't do the loop, it falls to the side like this. Okay, and then you take this, pull it back. You don't waste anything. Fly tying materials are really expensive. And it's nice and tight. And there's our little tail. We have one long strand that I don't like because it's not perfect. Nobody ever said I wasn't anal retentive. Now we're going to do our next step on how to find a marabou fly. Da, 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 da. And da, da, oops. Now, when you're picking out a mar excuse me, a marabou tail, when you're picking out a marabou feather, you gotta go. I like to really piss off the. The, guy, the boys at the fly shop because if you don't look at your feathers then they're going to sell you a bunch of rotten ones probably like in this in this here the best place actually to find marabou feathers instead of those fancy fancy fly shops is Ben Frank, Franklin's or Michael's I found this out by my uh, daughter's daycare provider who gets the, some of the best marabou feathers I've ever seen from craft stores now here's your feather you kind of want it to look like this, put it right up here, or put it in my hair like, like Pocahontas, and we tie in with this part. Oh, but I forgot, first we should do the body right here, because this we're going to use this for hackle. In the body, we're going to just use your basic clothy Chanel, it's this nice pink. Now this pink is well known for catching Glacier Chilled Steelhead. Why is that, you ask? Because the pink shows up in the Glacier Till. Black shows up in the Glacier Till. Orange, yeah. Red, no. Purple, no. Blue, no. I don't know why. It's something to do with the color spectrum. But I've always had my best luck with pink. So I put a little thing like that on there. Get this out of here. <laughs> and I make sure everything's tight. So I start right here, like that. Pull it down. Remember, we want this to be thin. Get a nice body. One good thing about this Chanel that we are using for the fly's body is that it gets weighted when wet and sinks faster, which is what we want. The faster your fly sinks, the faster it gets down to the fish and in front of the fish. 
and my phone is ringing, please ignore it. So I'm just going to tie like that. I'm going to leave enough space for the hackle in the front. Some people like to do a thicker back tail and thinner up to the front, which I just did, but not by much. This depends on what the type of fly you're tying. Some people like to be more Atlantic salmon type top fly tires. There's a great book out. You can spend $80 at the fly, show, fly store that will show you how to tie all your Atlantic salmon flies and then you can um, use those techniques to to on your um, your steelhead flies. And this is a lot of talking. I should have some water in front of me. So now that we got the body on, we're going to do the marabou hackle. And this is important. The way I do it uh, is easier than the methods they suggest in the fly tying books. Close up. When you're doing your hackle, we use a hackle holder that I demonstrated earlier. I have another one here, but I don't like it. It's too big and bulky. You stick it on the edge of this. These things are nice and tight so they don't fall. Uh, we're going to kind of lick our fingers. That's kind of gross after you tie enough flies. And put it on here again, making that loop. It runs down the finger now so it stays on top. And don't cover the eye with the feather. Okay? And the important part on this is to have the feathers facing the right way, which would be with the feathers going in like this. So when you start, get two going here. And see, and you can also let it hang, which is kind of cool. And you click your hunger and wet it, and you hold it down. So you get your hackle going the right way. You don't want to go the other way. Because then it won't go like pulsating like this. And you want to pull it out so it doesn't get wrapped up in itself. This is really exciting, I know. See how it's going? It's going to be pretty. And no, I'm not tying a pink fly because I'm a girl and I like pink. I've got most of my fish on pink flies, but then I, like I said, I fish a lot of glacier till rivers because that's where the big boys are. And see, now I have the perfectly tied, and the little guy stays here. And notice I had this, this hiding. And I roll it up like that. And well, this is the important part because I want to screw this up. I want to make sure I get the end of that feather right, right in there without screwing up the hackle. There we go. Let's see if I did this right. One more, just do three. I could tell a joke right now, but you know, yeah, it could be funny when you're tying a fly because that usually involves wine, which most fly tires indulge in. Okay. Why they tie their flies? This gets boring after a while, especially when you're tying a lot of trout flies. So I'm going to kind of make it skinny about a quarter inch back from the fly and lick my fingers again. Keep that hackle out of the way. Erica, you need to go out of here or mommy's going to beat you. I love you. Okay, so I got <coughs> the back of this going a little, a little ways because I'm going to put a weight on here. So, because these big flies have a tendency, <coughs> a hard time going down, even with your heavy weighted line from your 15 foot spray rod. So I'm going to try to 
get all the pink out of here. <coughs> I think I got a feather in my mouth. Excuse me. And I'm going to show you. <coughs> oh no. <coughs> Excuse me for a minute. 